So why don't we just keep this going, ladies and gentlemen, and please help me welcome to the stage, Miss Erica Powell. When I was six months old, I was diagnosed with a rare cancer called retinoblastoma. Cancerous tumors of the eyes. Now, back in 1993, they didn't treat retinoblastoma with chemotherapy. Instead, they decided to treat my cancer with radiation. And it worked. I've been cancer-free for over 20 years now. Which <laughs> definitely something to celebrate. But that radiation has left a lot of damage and has led to progressive vision loss throughout my entire life. So today, I can see just enough to be a little bit tricky and a little bit dangerous. <laughs> I'm totally blind in my left eye, so I see nothing out of that. It's pretty much lights out nothing. In my right eye, I can see a little bit, and it's basically whatever you see from 20 feet away looks about 200 feet away to me. So think about big shapes and colors. Like I said, a little bit tricky. Now, I get this comment all the time. You don't look blind. <laughs> and to that, I always just kind of laugh it off and say, well, really? What does a blind person look like? Because I sure as heck can't see them. <laughs> <laughs> I get comments like, well, how do you wear heels if you're blind? <laughs> And even the more concerning, you're too pretty to be blind. So I literally got that at an airport about two years ago, and those ladies did not get a very nice response from me. <laughs> but I get these all the time. I have this social media presence online, and my username is Blind Fit Girl. So I use my social media like Instagram and YouTube to talk about disability pride, self-advocacy, um, and of course, health and wellness. And it's a great way for me to connect with people all over the world and share my story, hear about theirs. It's just a really cool thing. But of course, I always get these really weird messages from people. This one man goes, come on, give it up. There's no way you're blind. You have abs. <laughs> I type back, excuse me, sir, your abs and your eyes are no way, shape, or form connected. And if yours are, let me know. I've got a great eye doctor. Shout out to Dr. Hubbard. I will give you his info, and who will get it all sorted out for you? <laughs> it's comments like these that show me we have a very misconstrued perception of disability. Before I go any further, I want to take a little assessment of the room here. So. Don't raise your hand when I ask this question because I definitely won't be able to see you. I need some like vocal cues. So I need some screaming, some yells, get excited. Who in here is a Clemson fan? <laughs> yes. I've got some really intelligent, awesome people in my presence. <laughs> this is great. Okay, so I was a student at Clemson from 2011 to 2015. And during my time there, I was a student athlete on their cheerleading team. When it hit the media that Clemson had a blind cheerleader, it like blew people's minds. They were just so shocked. I got so much press from this. I was in the newspaper. I was in, on TV shows. I even got a call from the Ellen Show. Like the real Ellen Show interviewed me over the phone. Now, Ellen didn't ask me to be on her show, so she must have found a way cooler person with a disability than me to have on there, <laughs> but it's still one of my claim to fame today. But that situation, the fact that it just blew people's minds that there could be this Division I level athlete excelling at high athleticism, the fact that it blew people's minds just showed me that not only do we have a misconception of people with disabilities, but of athletes with disabilities and what they're truly capable of. So tonight, I want to break down three myths that surround athletics when it comes to people with disabilities. And while I'm breaking these down, I want you to kind of lean into these because you might catch yourself. Maybe this is something that you have thought before, and that's okay. We don't know what we don't know. And a lot of times, all the world puts out for us are the misconceptions and the stereotypes. But if you do catch yourself and you've 
you figure out, hey, I have thought like that before. I just want you to dive a little deeper, lean in a little bit more, and hopefully change your perspective by the end of this talk. So let's dive in. Three myths. Number one, it's not cute. It's just not cute. So many people think that sports for people with disabilities is cute and precious. And maybe it is if you're watching children with disabilities do a sport, but not because they have a disability, because they're children and children are pretty much cute doing anything. There are fierce, tenacious athletes out there that compete at the highest level all the way up to the Paralympics, which is the Olympics for people with disabilities. The only reason why it's separated into your specific disability category is to make sure that competition is fair. So I know firsthand that these athletes are not cute. They are very fierce and competitive because they kick my butt in races and meets all the time. I was just at the Olympic Training Center in San Diego last weekend, working towards my own spot on Team USA for track and field. Haven't made it there yet. Fingers crossed, send me some good vibes because I need it. <laughs> but <laughs> hopefully my family and I will be in Tokyo next August. We'll see. <laughs> Number two, we can lose. Now, I know you're probably thinking I was about to say we can win, which of course we can win. But I want to really dive into the we can lose thing because when it comes to people with disabilities, so often we want to give everyone a gold medal, everyone a blue ribbon and a pat on the back because we don't want to hurt their feelings or lower their morale. And that's okay, but honestly, it's taking away their opportunity to learn. Losing is one of the best ways we learn from our mistakes. And the best athletes out there are the ones who lose over and over and over and pick themselves back up and learn from their mistakes until they finally win. If we don't let people with disabilities compete and lose, then we're robbing them of that opportunity. And finally, number three, it's not special. All too often, we want to really look at the differences between sports for people with disabilities and sports for people without. And we want to say that people with disabilities and um, athletes with disabilities have these special needs. And that's really just not true. At the end of the day, it's still sport. It might have to be executed a little differently. We might have to adapt a little bit, but it's still sport. And we still have the same outcomes when it comes to athletics with people with disabilities. People with disabilities who do sport have been proven to have higher social skills, more confidence, of course, overall stronger and more fit and healthy, and it has even been linked to higher rates of employment. All of the same outcomes that people without disabilities experience when they're included in sports. So it's not special, it's just sport. The best athletes in the world are the ones who are able to excel in any situation. No matter what, maybe there's a fluke in the game or a circumstance that they weren't ready for in the race, but they're the ones who are able to assess the situation, adapt to it, and then execute in a way to achieve their goal. The best athletes with disabilities or without disabilities do this. Successful people do this in life. And honestly, you guys, people with disabilities do this every single day. I think it's one of the best assets of having a disability because this process is ingrained in me, whether it's my sport-related activities or me just going to work or figuring out how to get around town or be successful. Assess the situation, adapt, and achieve. Now, if you don't hear anything else that I talked about today when it comes to athletes with disabilities, I want you to hear this because I think that it really does sum up this entire event that we've been celebrating tonight. We are so caught up in being politically correct and tiptoeing around the differences between people with disabilities and people without disabilities. And that makes us just forget about this big glaring commonality that we all have. People with disabilities and people without disabilities are all just people, period.
have two more things for you. One is a bit of bad news. Your abs and your eyes are not connected. <laughs> if, if they were, we would all have six packs just from blinking. <laughs> and I didn't get permission to do this, but I hope it's okay with Mike. I have got, I can't resist an urge to do a cadence count on stage for all my Clemson fans out there because this is awesome. So let's take it back to my cheerleading days. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. C L E N S O N T I D E R S. Fight, Tigers, fight, Tigers, fight, fight, fight. Thank you, guys.